Welcome to video 8.2, where we are going to be talking about views and map reduce in CouchDB. And that's the one and only topic for this video, creating and accessing our views. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, one thing to note before we get started, if you start getting error messages as you're going through this process, know that Photon does not very gracefully handle it when your session times out. So if you log in and then you have 10 or 20 minutes between operations when you're interacting with Photon, sometimes your session may time out and Photon doesn't give you a very nice error message that says, your session timed out or that takes you back to a login screen, it will just give you this uh, bouncing set of red bars here, or you'll start getting messages that say you don't have rights to do whatever it is you're trying to do. So if you just click the logout button that's at the bottom left corner of the screen, that will take you back to the login screen and you can reauthenticate and things should be better from there. So if you were following along with the last video, your CouchDB installation may be in a state kind of similar to this, where we have one student's database that has about eight documents in it. But just to make sure we're all starting at the same place, I'm going to suggest that you go ahead and delete this database and recreate it along with me. Uh, so we're going to get the same results as we work through this. So I'm just going to click on this trash can to delete students. I have to type the name of the database to confirm. All right, and now our database students has been deleted. And I'm going to recreate it. Actually, instead of using the GUI, I'm going to do this at the command line using curl. So curl put, and then here is our HTTP username, password, our server at port, four, or port 5984 slash students. That's going to create the students database. If we come back over here and refresh, we see we now have the students database, which has nothing in it. And now I have eight additional curl commands that are going to insert the eight students that we had in the previous example. So we can see all of those were inserted successfully. If we refresh again, we see we have eight documents if we click on our student database, here are the uh, here's a representation of the uh, of the eight documents that we just inserted. So all of this code is in the uh, slide deck that is posted to Blackboard. So you can uh, just copy and paste from there. Now, one thing we need to understand about CouchDB is that queryability is fairly limited, and for the most part, we don't ever execute any kind of ad hoc queries in CouchDB. Now there is a query interface called Mango that allows you to do this a little bit. And uh, as you're writing your views, you might kind of consider that to be an ad hoc query. But uh, for the most part, when you're actually using CouchDB, all of our queries are written ahead of time and expressed as views that we access. Now, one thing to help you understand views is to understand that the most important part of the view is the emit function. And emit takes two arguments. First is a key that we pass into emit that describes what documents we want. And then value is a JSON object that is going to contain whatever data it is we're asking CouchDB to return. Now, by default, there is one view in CouchDB that is automatically created when you create a database, and that is called underscore all underscore docs. In order to access this view, we have our normal connection string to CouchDB, followed by the name of our database, followed by underscore all underscore docs. And this is going to return the value of underscore ID and underscore rev for all of the documents in that database. So I'm going to switch over to our CouchDB server here, and I will clear that away. So if we say curl, Here's our connection string to our server slash students because that's the name of our database and here's the name of our view. We get back these eight pairs where the key is the value of underscore ID and then the value is the value of rev. And keep in mind from our previous discussion, the value of ID and the value of rev are the two values we need if we want to delete or update a document.
So that is a very simple example of accessing a view, but we can modify the behavior of a view by passing parameters in via the URL. So for example, if we wanted to get not just the value of ID and the value of rev, but we also wanted to see everything else that's in the document, we can just add question mark include underscore docs equals true to the end of the URL. So let's flip back over to CouchDB and see what that looks like. So here's our query and I'm just going to say question mark include underscore docs equals true. And now we get the contents of all of the documents in the database. And as we move through this lecture, we're going to find that there are a lot of different parameters that we can pass in via the URL to modify the way these views work even further. But before we get into that, I do want to address what's happening here when we say question mark include docs equals true, because if you're not familiar with web application programming, this may seem like a really weird thing to be doing. But using the question mark and the ampersand in a URL is actually a very common way to pass data to a website or to a web server. So you've probably seen URLs that look something like this before, where you have a pretty normal looking beginning, and then there's a question mark and just a whole bunch of stuff after that. So this very first part is uh, the domain or essentially the server that we're connecting to, and then the path to the file on the server that we're trying to access. So in this case, youtube.com is essentially the server, and then the path to what we're trying to access is slash watch. And then we have a question mark, which indicates to the web server that we're about to start passing in some arguments. The first argument we're passing in in this case is a variable called v, and the value of v is this string of characters. And presumably this is some type of identifier for this particular video. Then we have an ampersand, which indicates we're about to pass another argument, which in this case is this variable called ab underscore channel, and the value for this variable is this string right here, Professor Mark Grimes. So we could have another ampersand and pass in another uh, variable and value for that variable for as many parameters as we need. So with that in mind, let's add another parameter to this URL. And we're going to get this time from the all docs view, uh, all of the content in each document, but we're only going to get it for the one document that has a key that is equal to this value. Now, there are a few things to note about some weird formatting in this URL that we are curling. First, as we mentioned in a previous video, the quotation mark has a special meaning at the command line in Windows. So if we want to pass an actual quotation mark to the web server instead of Windows processing that quotation mark as a special character, what we have to do is escape the quotation mark. And we do that by putting this backslash in front of it. So this is telling Windows, don't process this quotation mark as part of the command. Take that quotation mark and send it on uh, to the web server as part of the string. So since we need to wrap the value of ID in quotation marks, we escape those quotation marks. And the second thing is this ampersand also has special meaning at the command line in Windows. Uh, typically an ampersand would be used to execute two commands, one right after another in one execution uh, from the command prompt. So in order to tell Windows not to, uh, or not to interpret the ampersand as that special character, we need to wrap the whole string in quotation marks. So that's what this starting quotation mark and ending quotation mark here are all about, telling Windows this is just a string that is being processed by curl and not to interpret this special character of ampersand that is in the middle of it. And note that we're not escaping these quotation marks because we actually do want the Windows command line to process them as the special character. Okay, that's not part of what we're sending up to CouchDB. So let's flip back over to our CouchDB instance. 
And I'm just going to modify the URL that we already were passing here. So I'm going to put my leading quotation mark here. I'm going to put my ampersand here. So we're passing another parameter into CouchDB. And that is that key is equal to, and then I escape my double quote, and I'm just going to pick one of these keys. And copy it. And then I'm going to escape my quotation mark again, and then have my quotation mark to close uh, this opening quotation mark. And so this is going to return from the all docs view, all data that's in the document, but only for this one document that has this value for ID. So when I execute this, we get back the document corresponding to this one student, uh, Michael Nash. Now, one other really interesting thing I will point out to you here is that we can actually just copy this URL into a web browser and get the same result, assuming that the web browser is already authenticated to Photon. So I'm gonna actually click around a little bit and make sure we don't get that error message. Oh, see, I think my session has timed out here because I'm just getting these bouncing bars. So I'm going to click log out and log back in here. There we go. And now, now I'm able to access things. So I'm going to open a new tab in this web browser and I'm going to paste this URL. Um, and I don't need my username and password here because my web browser is already authenticated to the database server. And in fact, a few years ago, the web browser Chrome removed the capability to do this altogether because it is kind of a poor security practice. And we don't need to escape our quotation marks in the web browser. So if we just have our connection to our database, the students database, the all docs view, question mark, include docs equals true, ampersand key equals this value, this should return a JSON object to our web browser, which is this document describing Michael Nash. And indeed, that is what we get. Very cool. So while it is nice that CouchDB includes this all docs view, uh, the really valuable thing is being able to create our own views. So we're going to walk through this process and create a very simple view to get started, and then we'll get more and more complex as we progress through the video. So we start by opening up our database. And then here where you see design documents, and remember we just said that all of our views are captured in design documents. I'm gonna click the plus sign and click new view. So at this point, we don't have any uh, design documents that exist, so we have to create a new design document. And I'm gonna just call this student info, and I'm going to name this view test view, which is not a very descriptive name, but we're only going to use this one once and then move on to bigger and better stuff. So as we mentioned before, the most important part of our view is this emit function. And emit takes two arguments, the first being the key and the second being the value. So what this view is going to do is return all of the values of ID as our key and then return a value of one for every document. So this is not a super useful thing to be doing, but this is what we're going to do for our first view. So click the uh, create view and index button. And now we will curl for that view. So we have our same connection string to the CouchDB server. We're in the students database. And then we say underscore design and then the name of the design document, which in this case we called it student info, then underscore view, then the name of the view, in this case we called it test view. And when we run this, we see we have all of the IDs of our documents and then a value of one emitted back to us. All right, so we created a view, but how about we create a view that is a little bit more useful? So we're going to create a new view called students per class, which is going to have 
a key of classification, and then a value of name. So it's going to emit back to us the classification of each document and then the name of the student that's associated with that classification. So back over in Photon, I'm going to click on the plus sign next to my student info document and cl click new view. Okay, so we're in our student info design document. We could put this in a new design document, but I think it's best just to keep all of these uh, kind of sitting together. And we're going to call this students per class. Okay, and we want to emit a key of doc.classification, and we want to return the value of doc.name. Okay. Click the green button that says create document and then build index. Okay. We have our new view saved. I'm going to call this up the same way. We're still in our students database. We're in our design documents and in particular the student info design document. And then we're looking at views inside that design document. I'm going to put students per class at the end here. And now we have a slightly more useful view. Uh, we're not just getting the IDs and the value one, we're getting all of the classifications, whether a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior, and then the name of the student corresponding to that classification in that document. But now let's imagine that we're uh, not interested in seeing all of the students that are, uh, that are enrolled in our university, but we want to see only the freshmen. So we can pass in an argument to CouchDB uh, to say we want to see this view students per class, then question mark key equals, and we're going to pass in a value for that key and only documents that match that criteria are going to be returned. So I first need to escape my quotation mark and I'm going to look for all of my students that I have a value of freshman for classification. And when we run this, we see we get just these three students that are freshmen. And then just like before, we could take this URL and paste that into our web browser and get rid of this stuff that we don't need. And we would have this JSON uh, document returned directly to our web browser, right? So that's pretty cool. Now another way we can make this view more useful is by emitting more than one value. And in order to do that, we have to create an object that contains whatever values we want to emit, and then we pass that as the second argument into emit. So let's imagine that along with our classification that we're using as a key, we want to emit the values of name and how many hours that that student has completed. So this has to be a well-formed JSON object that contains both a name and a value. So it'll look something like this. We'll flip back over to Photon, and uh, I'm just going to edit this time my students per class view. And where we are emitting this value, I'm going to wrap that in curly braces and name is doc.name comma hours is doc.hours okay save document and build index and now when we run this same exact query we see that our three freshmen have 12 18 and 12 hours amongst them uh, if we just hit refresh on our web browser up here you see this uh, object that's being passed back to us is also updated. Now another thing we can do, imagine we uh, wanted to search for not just a single key, but we had multiple keys. We want to see uh, everyone who's at the start of their college career and near the end of their college career. So we want to return all of our freshmen and all of our seniors. So instead of key, we're going to pass keys. And then we need to pass an array of strings into this argument. So an array is, uh, is notated with these uh, square braces. And we have to escape our quotation marks. So we want freshman, 
and senior, escape that quotation mark, and then another square brace. And another thing to look out for here is the square brace is also special to the Windows command line, so we have to escape that as well. And when we do this, we now get back all of our documents that have a value of freshman or senior for the classification. Okay, now I'd like to write just one more view before we move on to our reduce function. Uh, we're going to write a view called student class, which is going to have a key of name and emit values of classification and hours. And one thing I'd like to point out here is that while we, in the previous example, uh, in the object that described the values we want to emit, we had the name of the fields be the same as the name of the fields in the database. That absolutely isn't the case. So we might return the value of classification, but call it something like standing in the object that's returned, or hours and call that hours completed in the object that's returned. So let's go back over to CouchDB here. And uh, in my student info design document, I'm going to click new view. We're going to call this view student class. And in this view, we want to emit doc.name. So the name of the student is going to be the key in this view. And then we want to emit a value, which is a JSON object. Uh, which is going to have two fields in it, standing, which is going to be doc.classification, and hours completed, which we have to put in quotation marks if we want to have that space in the middle, uh, which is going to be docs or doc.hours. Okay, click create document and then build index. Okay, our view is now saved. And let's go ahead and take a look at it. And now we see we have each one of our students and the classification and how many hours they have completed returned as a JSON object. Now, one thing I will point out is that when you click that green button that says create view and create index, CouchDB is automatically creating an index on whatever field you have designated as the key. So when we query that view, the output is going to be returned in order of that key. So in this case, in alphabetical order, or if we had a key on hours completed, it would be in numerical order. So this really improves the performance of CouchDB. However, if we wanted this to be in a different order, like for example, in a descending alphabetical order, we can pass that in as a parameter, which is descending equals true. And now we get reverse alphabetical order based on the value of the key. Now, another very useful parameter we can pass in is a start key and an end key. So this is just going to tell CouchDB uh, what record to start at and what record to end at. So for example, if we wanted only students in the first uh, half or so of the alphabet, uh, we could say uh, start key equals, and then we need to escape A, and then ampersand, ampersand uh, end key equals, and let's go to F about that escape that and then we need to wrap this whole thing in quotation marks because we have that ampersand in there and when we hit enter here you see we get Angela Charlie and Edgar but we don't get Gina because G comes alphabetically after F now this start key end key thing can be a little bit tricky to work with because of the way it is processed if we wanted to see all of our students that have a name that starts with G, we can't just say start key G and end key G because uh, Gina is alphabetically after just the letter G, right? If we said start key G, end key is G, Z, well, Gina is alphabetically after just a G, but alphabetically before G, Z, right? So we might... 
uh, if we wanted all of our students with G, say something like, uh, you know, G or GA through GZ, or maybe say G through uh, H. Or, oh, I got too many quotes here somehow. So a very useful feature and uh, something that deserves to be played around with a little bit. But always remember to be careful escaping your quotation marks as you've seen here. So one additional thing I'll point out here, I've mentioned a couple of times that our views are all stored in design documents, which are just regular documents stored right alongside all of your documents containing data. And in fact, if you click on all documents inside this student's database, you'll see you have a document called underscore design student info. And if we click that, here is the code that goes behind all of these map views. Okay, and we're about to expand this a little bit and do not just map views, but also map reduce views. But before we move on to map reduce, here's just a little cheat sheet for a few useful CouchDB parameters. Most of these we have already seen. Uh, key, keys, descending, start key, end key. Uh, limit, we, we didn't do, but uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. You can say limit and then specify a number, and that's going to limit the number of documents that CouchDB returns to you. And then one that's going to come in very handy as we start talking about reduce operations is group, which is very similar to group by in a relational database. So let's move on to talking about our reduce operations. Now, one thing that you may have picked up on at this point is that all of our queries in CouchDB are actually MapReduce operations. And all of the queries and all of the views that we have expressed so far are just doing the map portion of MapReduce, which is just identifying records that we want to be working with. The reduce portion of MapReduce involves calculating, aggregating, and returning the results of some query. So let's imagine that we are interested in seeing how many students we have attending our university from each state. So this is a good question for a MapReduce function. So I'm going to go back over to CouchDB, I'm going to in our student info design doc, click the plus sign, click new view, and I want to emit doc.address.state because state is a subfield of the address object. And to get started, let's just emit a value of one for every state. Okay. This is very similar to the very first view we ever wrote. And state info. Not found. What happened here? I wonder if I timed out. Hmm. For some reason that view didn't create. So I'm going to click on new view again. State info. We're going to emit doc dot address dot state as our key, just a value of one for the value, create document and build index, saving view, oh, there it is that time. So let's try this again. And there we go. We see from our eight students, we have one with the value of Oklahoma for state, two with a value of Tennessee, and that would leave five with a value of Texas. Okay, but I don't think this is really what we intended to do. So what we need to do is actually edit this state info view. And here we have the drop down that says reduce, we're going to specify the reduce operation that we want to do. And in this case, let's say we want to get a count. Okay, so now we have our map function here, which is emitting the uh, the key and the value and then reduce, which is going to be counting the documents. So I click save document and build index. And let's run this view again. Okay, so we did something different. 
but I don't think this is exactly what we wanted to do. We did count that we have eight documents in this database, but what we really wanted to do was count the number of documents for each state. So what we really did here was the equivalent of doing a count in a relational database without specifying any attribute that we're grouping by. So what we can do is run this view again, question mark group equals true. And now CouchDB is going to group together the documents based on a common value of the key. So now we see we have one document that has a value of OK for, uh, for state, uh, two that have TN for state, and five that have TX for state. All right, cool. This is getting more and more useful. So now for one final view I would like to create, I want to be able to see some summary statistics for each one of our classifications, freshmore, sophomore, junior, and senior. So I'm going to click on the plus sign, say new view, and I'm going to call this class hours. Okay. And I'm going to omit for my key classification and for my value, just doc.hours. And then for my reduce operation, I'm going to select underscore stats. And this is going to give us a number of different descriptive statistics. Create document and build index. And now if we run this view called class hours group equals true, we get a lot of kind of cool stuff back. We can see that the total number of hours taken by all freshmen is 42 with a minimum of 12 and a maximum of 18. And then a sum of the square of the values is 612. I'm not sure exactly uh, when you would be using the sum of the square, but uh, perhaps that would come in handy. And then our juniors and seniors have these values that we see here. So that's it for today. Do know that we can create much more complex views with custom reducers and multiple reducers and all kinds of fancy things there. But uh, I think for this video, we have covered enough ground, so we'll be stopping here. Um, but one thing to really keep in mind to help your understanding of CouchDB is to remember that generally speaking, we can only query for documents based on the key that is emitted by that view. So when we admitted, for example, the name of all of our students and then the state that they're from, we can't filter based on state with that view where name is the key. We can really only filter by whatever we have uh, admitted as the key in the view. So that's kind of a tricky thing that we have to be able to get our head around uh, for effective use of CouchDB. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there is a little bit of ad hoc query functionality in Photon using uh, Mango, but that's uh, not really the normal way for interacting with uh, CouchDB and not something that we're covering here, but you might want to click around and, and play around with that a little bit just for your own education. So that's it for video 8.2. I hope you enjoyed it, and I really look forward to seeing how you apply this.